Everybody, we'll take a moment to somebody's on. Is everybody's mm -hmm. hold on? I have to. I think on Jean. I'm going to mute you. Everybody, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Go up with your inhale and let your hands catch if they will and go over to the side. Breathe in. Inhale and then keep reaching, keep lifting, keep pulling. Breathe in and up and over to the other side. You can still catch your hands. You can even use your hand to pull the other. Keep lifting, keep pulling and breathe. And go up and over again. And you can add on this time a little, a little cross with your foot and your other hands on your thigh. Breathe. And your elbow might get longer and longer. You have a little bit of ab tone right here where your ribs are pulling down. Try the little rotation down. Try the little rotation up. Now, when I say up, you can just make sure your neck's okay though. And then go up and over to the other side. So we've done one half moon. Now we're doing a second layer a little deeper. Your foot could cross. Your arm is reaching. You might even rotate down. You might rotate up. Good, find some good areas for you. This is a great posture stretch. Take another inhale. Keep opening, opening, opening like someone's pulling your arm. And then exhale to come back. I'm going to remove this, but we're going to have our hands at the heart. Feet together underneath your hips. Inhale, and then as you exhale, open up your feet. And take your arms out like a T, palms up. Pull your right knee into flexion. Now, at first, you're just going to bend it a few times to get some movement or snow fluid in there. Knee is over the heel. And then you're going to leave it and take your, it's a little, it's a little flow. So reach, but then come up and back and reach. Now, you can go as big as you want. So you could go to the floor and reach. Or you could just stay going to the thigh and reach. And inhale. And there's no, there's no wrong way. Just kind of. Open up your arms, open up your hips. We are doing five before we hold. It's going to wake up the muscles more before we hold. Now, the next time that you're, we're going to take our hand to our back thigh or our calf and stay there, Pariti Virabhadrasana is reverse warrior. Make sure you're not pushing on that knee though. <sighs> Breathe. Nine. You might be able to bend your knee more, Michelle, on the front leg. Eight. Seven, yeah, if that's okay. Six on the heel. Five, four, good. You're, you're, you might scan to make sure your knee's on top of the heel. Now open up into a warrior two. You can your hand and, hi Mary, hi Catherine. Open up 10, nine, Now this elbow could go to your thigh and this arm can go over. And if you want more, uh, like Cheryl, you might want to go down. You might like to even reach. Breathe. Ten. Yeah, it's fun to wrap the arm. Nine. Eight. Seven. Five. Take another inhale. Feels so good in the back. Now, with the very strong legs, push up. You're in warrior two, and then you're going to straighten that leg. This is five pointed star. So, just for a moment, take your hands at your heart. It's kind of like you're settling your mind body breath. Open up your arms again. Pick up your left toes and point them towards the um, same wall your left hand is. And now do a little movement that'll wake up your hips. And your knee you're just bending your knee a few times and then you're right Cheryl we're gonna do the upper body too and then stay there and then add the upper body yeah so we just warmed up the hip the knee and now we're warming up the upper body and yep and when you bend the knee 
you've got it in line with your heel. It's not drooping towards the big toe. It's in line with the second toe. And you may go lower. That's up to you because you might feel like you're getting warmed up. You might go further back. It's going to be about five times. My intention is just to have us all feel really looser, warmer, not so stiff before we hold. Now, the next time your hand, right hand to the thigh is there, you can stay up and over with your top arm. Just don't push on that knee laterally so you're not slamming on the knee. If you hurt when you look up, you can always change your gaze so your neck feels great. Breathing. Take another inhale. Now you're in warrior two, which means your vertical spine, you're looking over that left hand, your legs are stretched out. Now this elbow or forearm could go to the thigh and the top arm reaches over. And I like to lengthen through that elbow and it gets that whole side. Now if you want to go lower, you can. If you want to flip your arm behind you, you can. You can find what you need. Breathe. Yeah. And You're going to have really strong legs here and push up. Both legs go straight. Hands at the heart for a moment. Now breathe in and lift up and back a little bit. Inhale. Now you can soften the knees a little bit and come down. Your hands are probably going to be on the floor between your feet, but if not, just hold on to your ankles. But otherwise, hold. Relax your neck. Now, you can start bending one knee a little and then bending the other knee a little, and maybe you'll go down lower. I just want you to listen to your body. You're going to feel your hips wake up in different ways. Don't feel like you have to go all the way down, though. Just even bending and shifting should feel like it's getting it good. If you want to go down, you can. Everybody's looking good, but you're listening to your body. Good. And let one side stay bent knee. You can stay here and stretch. Uh, it's nice to fold your knuckles under and be on your, fore, your, your knuckles rather than your hands flat if you want. Or if you want to go all the way down and you can, don't force your knees, you can. Jean, I know you like a wrap. This one's super fun. Catherine, I wouldn't go down all the way for your knees. I'm just showing different options. Yeah, breathe in. Good. There you go, Jean. Inhale. We are going to shift to the other side and it can be about 90 degrees so you may be there or if you want to go a little lower yep you're just notice how one side's getting more attention good oh okay there you go i didn't know your knees could be bad great jean i see you good good michelle all these hip openers help the back Now, gently come back up. And then this time, if you can, you're interlacing your fingers at your low back and you're gonna let the arms go over. And then place your hands at your hip bones and go up halfway. Now, blood pressure might take a moment to adjust and then continue going up. 
your elbows could squeeze together here. Lift up your heart and just honor the neck. You might have a little chin tuck. Inhale. And then come to a neutral spine, hands at the heart. Step or jump together. If you would like a sip, grab one. Good. Great, Cheryl. Grab a sip and mm -hmm. we're going to meet back on the mat. And this one is going to be more like a pyramid. The right foot's forward. Let me turn to you. The right foot's forward. The left foot's back. Go into a crossed arm shoulder uh, mobility movement and a shoulder mobility as big as you can without pain. <sighs> About five of those, inhale, and I'm doing five here, but if you need more do, you can hold on to your fingers or your elbows or namaste. It's a shoulder release. Now keep the shoulder open as you exhale and hinge. The legs are long, but if you need to bend them a little to have um, less hamstring pull, please do. You might look at your toes for your neck to be in a soft alignment. Now we're gonna push into the floor and see if you can take a little extension here. Inhale, and then bring your hands together at the heart. Softly land that left foot to the right. Take your right foot back about four feet deep. Go up and around. Inhale as you lift, and as big a circle. So now the shoulder circles might be bigger. You're up and around, and just check your feet are on your, um, Railroad tracks, hold on to your elbows or your namaste reverse or inhale or your fingers and then exhale, hinge. All right, your gaze is probably at those front toes. We're going to take another inhale and as you exhale push into the floor and come up and even a little into a back bend here upper back I mean and bring your hands together at the heart let your back foot softly land next to your front foot wonderful job now we're going to take an inhale to go up in the arms a little bit of a back bend and if you can take squat posture if your knees are good then go into a heel heavy uh, chair that's good Cheryl the way you adjusted your neck just slightly down is generally going to feel nice your knees are in line with your second toe Head just a little bit, Miss Catherine, and see if that feels okay. Yeah, just, yep, that's it. Nice. And that straightens your upper back a bit. Now come up and let your blood pressure sort of uh, adjust. Sometimes there's a blood flow movement. Inhale, open your arms. Exhale, same thing, but you've got this reach. Building strength. Now, if you are some, if you can go to lower at 90, go for it. If you need to be up a little higher, up two, go, go for it. Building strength. Inhale. Now push into your heels and come up, hands to your heart. Let the blood pressure adjust. So we're adding on. Inhale. Arms up. Have a seat. Now you're going to find your chair challenge that doesn't hurt your knees. If you would like to add on palms together, open up to the right and hook your elbow if you would like. Ten. Keep your legs the same.
face front, and rotate. Face front, stand and pause for a moment. Ooh, grab a sip if you'd like, we're gonna come back. So your legs should feel warm, I hope they feel warm. Lift and spread your toes. Take your hands either beside you or interlace them at your low back, you choose. Lift and extend your left leg behind you in a diagonal you could be here for modification diagonal or you could head towards parallel to the floor take another inhale slowly come back to neutral Interlace your fingers the other way so the other pinky's on the outside. Inhale. Exhale, hinge. Take that inhale and exhale, come back. So that was balanced. Let your hands come to your heart. Lift and spread your toes about three to five times. Now leave your left foot down and take a foot up. You could have it low, tree, calf, maybe the inner thigh. Uh, why don't we go straight for a opener? like uh, your choice, shoulder opener. Yep, that'll do, Betty, that's a good one. Yeah, nice. That looks higher than usual, Jean, good job. When you're ready, you could take your hands to the heart first, then lower your foot and some seat to he, lift and spread your toes to the other side. And there's that um, image of you pushing your foot in and your thigh pushes back. So there's a little bit of co-contraction happening. Find a shoulder release that serves you. And then add the, the long breath. Good We're going to take that inhale and exhale your hands come together and then lower that foot. Wonderful, and then grab a sip if you'd like. We're gonna meet on the standing triangle position. <clears throat> this is a five-pointed star to start. So in five-pointed star, your arms are out like about wrist over the ankles. Lift and spread your right toes towards the same wall that your right leg is facing. And just imagine you're up against a wall. You're sliding your back and your legs are staying all up against the wall. Pretty soon you kind of run out of room. That's your place to come down to triangle. Classically, the left arm could be up to start. There you go, Jean. But if you would like, like for me, I tend to really need a side stretch. You can go over your ear on that one and you kind of rotate your torso. Good. Find your neck happy place.
and just notice how good that feels. Take another inhale. Now you're going to be power uh, in your legs, strong legs, they come up. Now for a moment, just hold the hands of the heart, your feet are still wide, inhale. I like to notice how does one side feel compared to the other? One side feels really spacious and open. <laughs> come open to the arms, lift and spread your left toes, reach out. Now it's, I have that slide over a slippery counter image in my mind, and then all of a sudden you kind of run out of room, it's where your bones hit. And that's your place, your hand can come down, you don't force it. Now the arm could be up, and if you're kind of like me and you're still craving a little bit more, go over. And ah, uh, there, Catherine, uh, Karen, that looks great, that long line. There is a little, make sure your neck is in a happy place. But you can think about little rotation, like your right rib cage is rotating towards the sky. Breathe in. Breathe fully. Take that inhale. And as you're ready, you're gonna push up. Now, five-pointed star and then hands at the heart. Step or walk your feet in together. Ah, terrific. Uh, grab a sip, we'll be back here at Warrior One. Standing postures build balance, strength, improve posture. Now the right foot is in the front of your mat if you're using your mat on this and the left foot's towards the rear. I'm gonna turn to you. Left foot is out a little bit. Uh, so this is not the one where it's heel up. This is the one where the foot's down. Go up with your arms at first and then just check. Is your knee over the heel? Now lift your arms when you feel like that's settled and kind of in place. Solar blades are down. Breathe in and breathe low, your, your belly breath. You have a little ab tone as you pull your pubic bone up. Breathe in. Now we're gonna change the arms and make it more like a field goal post and notice how you can bring the elbows more behind you. It's kind of like you've walked through a doorway. You're trying to stretch the shoulders and the chest. Yep. And you're doing the pull yourself instead of being on a doorway. Now a third position for the hands, either interlace or namaste at the low back or our interlace and then open the chest a third way. Breathe in and there's a little lift in your sternum. Stay strong in that front thigh. Breathe in. Now the hands are gonna to go to the front, your heart. Shift forward a little bit. Feel the thigh get really strong. Can you feel how your front thigh now has your body weight? It's just a hinge though, your back is long, your gaze might have a tilt chin so that your right leg is getting extra load. Inhale. Now in one motion, you're gonna to try to bring that back foot to the front foot. Here we go, one motion, land. Woo, okay, good job. Right foot about four feet or four and a half feet deep. It's down. In other words, the pinky side of that right foot is down. Your left knee is at 90 as you open up your arms. Now, when you open, I like to scan the left knee and just make sure it's still behaving over my heel. Hips are steered uh, forward. Yep, left foot forward and the left knee's at 90. Uh huh. Now you're on railroad tracks. You're not on a tight rope. Here is a little pubic bone pulling up cue and a rib pulling down cue. So you have some ab tone. You're not just hanging out in the low back like a gymnast at the end of a run. You've got some ab tone. Now the second position was like a field goal post. Act like you've just walked through a doorway and someone's helping you pull your forearms back. Your chest should be open. Your arms are behind you. <clears throat> yeah. 
Breathe in and let the breath help your posture muscles stretch. Front thigh is working. Right hip is stretching. Now the third hand position could be interlaced or namaste reverse, but something different. We've done three different arms here. Hold, keeps that left thigh strong. Steer your right hip forward a little bit, Miss Cheryl. Yeah. Back heel is getting a length, getting a stretch. Now the hands are gonna to go to your heart. Your body is like a, a hardcover book. You hinge forward, you're not rounded like a turtle, you're hinged. Now your front thigh has more strength in it. Your back calf is getting more length in it. Your neck is easy. Feel that front thigh getting stronger. Feel the back calf getting longer. Take another inhale. Now in one motion, you're gonna to try to land softly. Woo, good job. All right, this is one arm up and all the way back until your hand goes to your foot or your ankle. Your other hand goes forward. Good. You can hold on to something. You can also pull your ribs down and your pubic bone up. Now add your foot pushing into your hand. Take that inhale, come up more gracefully than I did, and hands come to your heart. <laughs> Good. All right, breathe in, your left arm goes up and back. Hold on to your foot. At first, we're just gonna really focus on the quad stretch and the balance here, the ribs down, the pubic bones up. That's why if you need to hold on to something, that is just fine. We wanna try to get that thigh first. Now we're going to be adding on the foot pushing into the hand. Breathe in, and then exhale to gently come back, hands at your heart. Wonderful, grab a sip if you'd like. Be back at the standing position. And once you're back to standing, do you remember how we did warrior one? This is crescent pose, kind of similar, but you're gonna send your left foot about four and a half feet back. This time their left heels off the floor. I know I have my Himalayan light on lamp, but my heels up. So it's a little different. Now open up your arms and it's basically like a lunge, but your hips are square. Pull the pubic bone up, lengthen that back leg. Neck is soft. Keep lengthening through your back leg. You can feel that hip flexor. Act like someone's trying to pull your arms up. You're stretching through your spine. Take another inhale. Hands come together. You're going to land your back foot to the front foot. Whew. Let your blood pressure adjust. Send the other foot back a good four and a half feet deep. Now your back heel is off the floor and all the toes are touching. Your front thigh is about 90 degrees here at the knee. Go up. Keep 
keep drip, drip, keep uh, lengthening your back knee keep dropping through the hips keep pulling the pubic bone up hold feel that hip flexor kind of giving letting go Take another inhale. Let your hands come together, shift forward a bit, and then land. Whew, nice job. Now, this is five-pointed star at first. Now, exhale, go down. Leave your right hand or knuckles on the floor underneath your nose. Pick up your left arm towards the sky and check your right hand if it doesn't like to be flat on the mat and you're barely on it you can always tuck your knuckles under and be more uh, wrist aligned breathe in where does your neck need to be because it's not so much about the neck as it is about the chest shoulders and upper back see how you give in a little bit there's a little bit more rotation that happens the top hand can even hook behind you now We're going to take that inhale to go up in the arm. Now the exhale brings that hand or knuckles down. Inhale, windmill your right arm open and reach, 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 reach. Now check your neck. It needs to be in a happy place. Imagine you're wringing out your wash rag or wash rag is your spine. You might even hook that elbow behind you. Inhale, and then exhale. When you're ready, roll, roll down or rotate down to the floor. Have an elbow in each hand and kind of dangle like a bell. There's no wrong way to do it. Just let go of tension. Let go of tension. And then you're going to put your hands down and walk them more forward as if you're doing a down dog, but your legs are still stretched out like a big wide V. You got it, Michelle. That's it. And there is an additional, if you run tight in the SI track or the low back, pull your toes, point them towards each other like you're internally rotated, kind of like my ducks in the backyard. So they're internally rotated and then that'll open up the SI. Grass the hips back. Lengthen through your knees. You're barely on the hands, so the wrist should feel pretty good here. Either stay here, or if you would like to lift up your heels and pass through up dog, uh, pass through plank through up dog. Now, if your wrists are bothering you, you may just want to stay in that hammock pose. If you lift your heels and you do a plank, if your back's bothering you, may, you may just want to do go to the plank and then back, or you might just want to stay in hammock. So just notice with any of these movements, you can customize to how your body's feeling that day. If you're adding the whole shebang, lift your heels, articulate through your back, get a big, strong upper back stretch. That's nice, Karen, good one. Going side to side is a great one. Breathe in. Now exhale, come back and walk your hands a little closer, more underneath you. Hold onto your ankles and pull for five. Walk over to your right leg and hold on the right leg all by itself.
Walk over to the left leg and give it, it its own attention. Come back in the center, kind of release any tension and walk your hands up at the hips, kind of let your blood, let your blood pressure re uh, readjust. And then as you're ready, you can come up and you're going to squeeze your elbows towards each other, your heartless. Let your hands come to your heart and shimmy or step or jump your feet together and notice how you feel. Grab a sip. We're going to meet back here still. You're doing great. Everybody's doing great. I hope your hips feel great. This one is uh, Utkatasana, but we're going to add a hip opener and leg strengthener. So lift your arms. Sit your heels heavy and your glutes back. Now we're together. We're going to put our hands at the heart after you're, um, you're feeling balanced in your legs. If you would like to add on, lift up one ankle and put it on your thigh. And let me get on the floor instead of the big thick mat and try 10. Good. Now you're going to stand for a moment. Arms come up. Have a seat. Good, Karen. And you know, you're just doing this at your own pace, but then your hands come together. Your other ankle lifts. You activate that hip opener. We're going to take another inhale. And on the exhale, stand. Now, I'm going to have us take a sip, but we're going to be heading down to down dog. So I will tilt the screen down. You are um, going to be in a down dog, so I'd love to be able to see you. Yeah, okay. So I'll do the formal inhale up, exhale down, feet go back down. Now, if down dog doesn't serve you for wrist, you can go to your forearms and do dolphin. While you're here, if you would like to bend one knee and then bend the other, you're giving each calf uh, circulation and uh, individual tension. You can even go both at the same time up and down, and it's like you're giving them a little extra blood flow before you stretch them. Now, if you're in down dog and you need more stretch, try a few things. Either lift your toes, not your heel, but your toes, or if you want more stretch, go to your forearms. Sometimes that'll help. Lift your sit bones. Take another inhale. And then I'm gonna have us come down, but I'm gonna show a couple things. And the first is a cat cow where you're uh, in an all four position. You exhale and inhale. And you're really just giving your back, you know how we do all those articulations, but this is um, an easy enough pose generally that you can give your back all your attention and you're not worried about your arms or challenged. If your knees don't like this, double up your mat. Now this time, just draw a circle with your hip. Act like you have a paintbrush on your hip and you're drawing the biggest circle behind you. And um, Michelle, you'll have to tell me how this feels for your back. I mean, go the other way. The other thing I like about all fours, if you're ever um, having any back issues, then this one would be a nice one instead of swan. So uh, you could stay here and do opposite arm, opposite leg reach if you have anything going on with the back. Or uh, if you would like to go down, you can take a little inhale to lift you and either forearm sphinx, which is a nice first pose, or hand, swan. 
So everyone looks good that I see. Just make sure you feel good. Awesome. Now the breath. This is the magic. So breathe in your upper back. Breathe in your upper back. Breathe in your upper back. The glutes are helping you, but they're not so tight that you feel like you're jamming bones, jamming tight uh, joints. Lower, and as you're ready, you can even put your hands interlaced at your lumbar spine or beside your hips and go up. If you want to add your toes lifting, do. If that's too much, leave them down. Breathe in. Now, relax. If you would like to take bow pose, you can. And if you don't want to, take the one we just did, Shalavasana. The other trick is you could just do one foot. You want bow pose, Jean? Yeah, both feet. If you don't do two, don't worry. We're going to do it twice, so don't force your knee. Good. Hold, breathe. Relax for a moment. We're going to do a second run or your other foot, your other leg. Up. Yeah. And relax. Child pose. And I'd like to offer the toe under variation. So if you've been walking more or hiking more, gardening, you've got these, oh, little foot muscles that like it. Head can relax, I'm just showing you. If you need more foot stretch, come up and your toes are curled under. If you need more toe stretch, put your hands behind you. Only if you need more toe stretch. So if you don't, don't do this one. Yeah, there you go. Love it. Okay, guys. Now we're going to be going down. Try to take 10 seconds or so. I like to have a pillow handy and maybe a Pilatus or a Dynaband handy. So, um, and maybe a foot block handy. Look at all the props I like to have around me. <laughs> so, whatever makes you happy because it's going to be a lying down series. Okay. Now your fingers could go behind your head and you can take about 30 of these abdominal, they're also called crisscrosses. And if you're not into that, just take the happy baby pose and wait for a bit. But you're, you're trying to do these with ease and flow and straining my neck. <laughs> Gotcha, Jean. Okay, now when you're ready, you're gonna take your right ankle to left thigh and reach your hand through your window. Now this is where the pillow could come in. Nice, Cheryl. Hug for a bit. Nice. And I like a little rock here. Take your other one ankle to thigh.
Now, with grace and ease, lift up and take about 20 of these abdominal crunches. And if you are uh, opting out, then what you can do is take a hamstring stretch and wait. And the other option is you can put your hands behind your head and make it a little bit more um, neck supported. Another option is toes pull back. So that's a little more hamstring. Belly in. One more each. Now I am going to show the foam roller or a block. So at this moment, my block is handy, so I'm just using it. It doesn't matter. You just kind of want to lift as a low back release. So even that right there, Michelle, I think that would feel great just to do this. But if you would like to add your hamstring foot up. Now at first, this left me, if you are tight, feels like it's better um, bent because you might uh, feel like it lifts your ribs if you lengthen it. But if you can lengthen your left leg and you feel a hip stretch, a hamstring stretch, and no back strain or low back lordosis, what you actually feel is a decompression of the lumbar spine because finally your hips are higher than your low back. Normally in life we're standing and the low back's just getting all this weight on it, you know? So this is a decompression. It may slide, so you may need to adjust, especially yeah, if you have like slick tights on or anything. Let your long leg go, like the hip flexor, let it go, relax too. Take your leg across the midline a bit. You can take your leg out a bit. Take it towards center again and then try your other one and if you need to readjust you can if you need to modify you can bend that knee instead of extending it good Catherine that looks great uh, good Jean good Karen yep when you lengthen your leg if it makes your ribs pop up then just bend the knee a little it gets no problem there's no shame And then when you breathe, you can scan your body. And if you're holding on to tension, you just gently let that go. So I just had a little in my shoulders. So when I did a body scan, I just let that go with my exhale. Cross the midline. Probably that outer hamstring just got a little bit more um, stretch. Back to center. Now you can even take the uh, legs over that roller and it's a low back release. If it's too much, you put you bend both knees and or one at a time. So this should feel good. If it's not, try lowering it towards your heels a bit and relax here. We're gonna, I've got the timer on here. We're gonna take 30 seconds here.
And what you can do is slide one foot up a little and then slide the other one and release your block and take your left leg long and take your right knee over for a knee down twist. Your right arm, it may give you this urge to do circles. And so please do. It may just say, hey, lie out and open up the palms. Like just find what you need. The left hand can help your right knee like a paperweight keep in place. 30 more seconds. Inhale, and then exhale, lower, and then take it to the other side. Now, then we put that, put your knee down twist. Your hand can act like a paperweight. Your left arm might want to do some circles before you settle in. Your palms up and, uh, excuse me, exposed to the sky. When I say up, I just mean externally rotated. Hand helps out your knee. 30 more seconds here. And then gently come back. And if you would like a foam roller underneath your back or a, a block underneath your sacrum, you can take that. You know, just stay about 30 seconds here and just breathe fully, inhaling through your nose. Slowly move the block and then lower down and then take it at your speed coming to side to a sitting position. Lift up through your spine, but without much effort. Good job. We're going to drop it ear to shoulder. And if you can reach your arm down and your hand might even help. Scalings, trapezius. We're going to hit that. Diagonal, which is a little elevator scapula, but it's kind of like you're smelling a flower. Reach your arm down for more. Up and over to the other side. And this shoulder, uh, it's relaxed, even though you're holding your head. Reaching that arm down. Feel how you reach down more, you can get more. And then like a little smell of your flower, an imaginary flower. And right down the middle, I like both hands and you might even pull the elbows towards each other. And gently come up and just gently massage right at the um it's like you have shampoo fingers you're just shampooing the base of your upside down you your occipital ridge oh, it gives me chills so there's so many muscles there if you find a way to softly uh soften your muscles you can get in there a little bit right these are the ones that if they're tight they can cause tension headaches so just kind of Relax that area. Even the temporalis above your ears is a TMJ, you know, area where people get tension. 
and even the jaw, the masseter, the strongest muscle per square inch. If you accidentally um, crunch or bruxism at night, clench, that's the word I meant, not crunch. All right, and then just smooth down your scalene. So your scalenes run from jawline to clavicle. You're just smoothing out the scalenes. It doesn't have to be hard. You're not trying to like break any lymph nodes. You're just pulling the muscle along. I, I like to think of an iron. Or when I was a kid, I used to see these uh, National Geographic images of women in Africa with all the rings on their neck and they would add one a year. So you think about that really long, beautiful neck. Smoothing it out. And then we're gonna just notice how that feels. Like I feel all tingly and lengthened and soft there. See how you feel and ease and flow. So we're just gonna let our hands come to heart. And I notice how how much ease and flow there is in your neck now, even if it's not 100% you know, gone, just how much better it is. And then what we can do is set an intention that during the day, we're just gonna be gently aware, your body is really good at this, so you can just tap into its wisdom. When you notice something accidentally creates a stress response and your shoulders lift or your jaw tightens or your mouth tightens or your neck grips, your hands tighten that you're going to be able to scan that and notice that you want to go back into homeostasis that that external variable probably doesn't warrant the stress response that we're giving it so we just notice it and we're just going to let it go and come back into this ease and flow state that we deserve we deserve to feel good with high wellness and peace with so much appreciation thank you guys so much i'm so glad you could come thank you so much Good to see you. Good to see you. Miss Cheryl, how's your neck? I'll text you later. <laughs> okay, good. Bye.